afternoon. It's going to bring it all up on screen here so we can see what we are doing and kill the volume. Hello, Jeanette. I have got big plans for the next hour. I hope you all have your game faces on and you are all ready to create or watch me create something awesome. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. I this afternoon as part of the Great International Online Show I am going to create a double scrapbook page using Minte papers and it will be available as a kit at the end of the class. I just need to take a photo of it and then pop it up online. Uh, so it is going to be a really sweet, easy layout. And I'm looking forward to it. So you can jump online to nataliemay.com.au. We have got some fantastic specials running at the moment, including 15% um, off paper collections and 15% off of collage paper until the end of today. So we have got plenty of opportunities, or plenty of, there's plenty of opportunities there for you to pick up a bit of a bargain. Um, I got in contact with my Minte supplier, my lovely friend, and um, we have got a great range of papers here and I've actually started by doing a little bit of fussy cutting. So I will talk you through this in a moment. And I think there was one page I forgot to give, to grab. So I'll get Lou to get that in a second. But this is a beautiful, really lovely, collection beautiful collection which is quite floral and romantic um, and I do love these earthy colors that go with it so we have got a these so the, the paper is called Minte and this is what we are doing in the what you've got in the kit we've got this beautiful paper here so lovely ochre sort of goldy rusty backgrounds there and then on the other side of that uh, are the shutters the doors we have got this one here which is my personal favorite hey Louise could you grab for me the piece of paper from the full piece of paper from over there the one that looks like this thanks um, so yeah this one here which is all the shutters um, so there's actually two pieces of this paper in the kit because we're going to use I hadn't decided which one I was going to use but I want to use one side of each thank you uh, we also have in the kit uh, this piece of paper which has got all the fussy cutting elements on it. Um, there's lots and lots of coordinating little images here. Uh, so that one and that one. Oh yes, I did mention this one. This is my favourite one out of it. I really love these antique sort of old tickets and bits and pieces there and the other side of that is this lovely image as well uh, so I haven't worked out which side I'm going to use but safe to say it'll probably be that side uh, the paper collection also includes these three by four cards now we're going to be using these um, as in our, our embellishments and we're also going to be using the frames as well okay so we're going to be using those uh, so that is that, that is that. Now there is also this paper here in your kit and I do love this because it's got this cut out here, this cut out here and the other side has got this sort of cracked paper on it. And then the other one is this one with the, with the swing with the books on it and the bird cage and the fountain at the bottom and then the back of it's got this kind of concrete look to it as well so there's some really great papers so I have started by doing a little bit of fussy cutting 
So I have cut out, let's get that out of the way. And I'll show you what I have pre-cut to save a little time because this can be quite the process. So this is what the original was. And then this was here. So I've cut out this element here, just around the flowers and loosely around the bird cage. So I've cut that one out. And then from this bottom corner, I have cut out that bit there and then that actually sits come here there as part of the jigsaw puzzle but I've kept this piece here intact because I don't know if I'm going to use it yet okay so I cut that out and my my fussy cutting is not that fussy okay it's fairly loose as you can see all right so I've got those sitting there uh, that piece there I didn't use that was a piece across the bottom all right so I'm just gonna pop that off to the side uh, now the other piece so this one is the other piece of paper that I have fussy cut out the corners so this one has got the fountain down to the number plate to the rows so it kind of fits in like that I didn't feel the need to cut out that tap element and then I have cut out the swing with the bird cage as well. Okay, so that has come out of that area there. So there's plenty of fussy cutting with this one. Alrighty-o. Now I have also cut out ready to go some elements from the fussy cutting sheet not all of them I've just cut out some flowers all the floral elements mostly and the bird cage I've left a few of these other items but you can cut those out as you need later on so like I was saying this what we're creating at the moment will be available to purchase as a kit uh, online in about well as soon as I finish teaching and you will be you're watching the instructions so there won't be any written instructions for the kit but there will be um, a photograph of the finished project and you're currently watching the instructions now you will just have to excuse me for a moment I'm just going to adjust the camera just a little just so that I can get a little bit more on screen there we go and What I like to do is I like to get some sticky tape and stick my two pieces of white cardstock together so that I have got one long 12 by 24 piece. And what I will do is I will cut this in half after I've completed the layout, okay? I do this because it is easier to tell the whole story across the page. Why is that crooked? That's super frustrating. And that just made it worse. Sorry guys. That'll do. Okay, so let's have a look here. So let's have a look at the key elements that I've got. We've got that one. We've got that one. Let's pop that aside. Oops, let's just pop that aside. This is one of those times where I need a much bigger desk. I've got that one. And I've got that. So these are like my key images. So this is what, these are the, the elements that I've cut out already, okay? So I want to use these as significant pieces on my page. 
how am I going to do that? So I can use them going that way and that way. They don't, as you can see, they don't fit really well. Too long, too long. But I do like that sitting. I do like that over that side actually. This one here might be nice going down the middle. And that one might be nice there with a bit of that there. I quite like that. The other thing that's going to help me here is I have got some <laughs> I have got some pretend photos here, some photo mats cut up ready to go. Um, this will give me a bit of an idea on what photos I want to put on with scrapbooking. So scrapbooking is all about photographs and making sure that the story is about the photos. So I've got some photo mats ready to go because the photos are the important bit. So I want to make sure that I include the photos. So I know I've got a, like a six by four there, a six by four there. I can probably get another six by four in down here. And I've got a smaller photo maybe I could put up here. So there's at least an opportunity for a minimum of four photos. Uh, alternatively, I could balance it by going for a bit of that and a bit of that. Which works for me. Alison's just commented saying that she hates fussy cutting. Um, I don't love it. But I don't totally hate it either. I find that if I, I have to be in the right mood for fussy cutting, I have to be in the right headspace to create, like to, to sit down and cut up a heap of stuff. Um, definitely have to be in the right frame of mind. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this one here with the doors and I want to put those down here and down here. I want to keep this page super simple because the embellishing and the um, all that fussy cutting, those lovely big decorative corners, they are going to be the hero, okay? So I'm thinking I'm going to cut that bit there and that bit there. Um, and I'm just going to cut. Now there's no measurements. I'm using the door frames as the visual. So that's the, the, the point that I'm using here. And that looks good there. That I'm going to discard for the moment. That can go there right so this is about balancing across that whole page the page with the frames on it I'm going to pop that aside and come back to it because that's all about embellishments to start with at the moment we are laying down a, a colorful foundation for the, for the base uh, I do really like this I think that this is really really pretty so I'm going to Think about how I can use this one. So I'm going to cut the barcode strip off first. So this is one of the older collections from Minto and I think that these ones are absolutely timeless. I think that they're super pretty, really, really easy to work with uh, and I think that that's a really important part. Now I reckon with this one, I want some strips that are going to go across my page, but as you can see, I've got a gap there. So I'm going to need to go for a couple of pieces and extend that out. So coming back to here, I'm going to turn my paper in sideways and I'm going to do a five inch, five inches from there to there. Then I'll do another one at 
five inches. So I'm keeping my pieces nice and big and then I can come back and trim them down if I need to after. So what I think I might do is I do like these tickets, but it's a bit bold. So that is going to go across here. Now I want to, I think I want to tuck them in underneath those doors. So if I'm going to slide my photos out of the way for a moment on this side, I'm rec I, I reckon I think I want to do a bit of that and I might take it to the middle here and with this one I'm going to extend it to there and I'm going to photos gone photos gone I'm going to take that to there now I can trim off that excess so rather than doing I'm just going to measure and cut so I've eyeballed it and I know that I just want to cut it at about here on that side and about here on that side all right so now I'm going to trim those back using my pencil marks as a reference As crafters, learning to trust your eye is really, really important. Learn to judge balance, looking at something and go, oh, well, that looks really good there. Um, and learn to trust that it's visually pleasing, okay? Right, so that now slides in about there and they meet in the middle about there so then I know that I've got only a little showing there and a little showing there um, the other papers that I have available to me I've got some of this this is the off cut left of my door I really like that and I really thought that maybe that could go in under here and this piece isn't quite long enough it's a bit of an odd piece and that is why we have got two pieces of the doors so I reckon I might I might just tear a piece to fit across there And we're going to need to join it because that's longer than 12 inches. So when I tear, I like to back tear, which means I'm going to push my dominant hand back. No, I'm not. I'm going to bring my dominant hand forward and push my non-dominant hand back so that I have got no white showing and I have got that raw edge okay and now I'm going to do the same thing again for the smaller piece because we need to extend it the full length so you know what let's just do the whole length That will go there and I can trim that off in a moment I can push that up a little higher take that down to there because the hero is the photos and then closely followed by those bits all right okay right so I'm pretty happy with that I'm just gonna pop those pieces aside and I'm gonna do a little sticking so I know that these two pieces are gonna go on this side so I'm just gonna pop them off to the side these two are going to go on that side. I'm going to pop them off to the side there. And now I'm going to do a little sticking down. So I could edge my the edges of my papers in a really nice 
uh, ink, nice brown ink would look fantastic to distress it up a bit. But I don't want to spend the whole time doing that. And I have to ink, you ink one thing, you have to ink everything. So I'm using the edge of my craft knife. Feel, hear that sound? To just distress and rough up those edges. Yes, I may lose a finger, but it's all good. It's just roughing up those edges. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, and this is something that I do a lot with my kits, is I do not over tape. I can go back and add more tape, but I'm just putting one strip down there and adhering it, so then I can tuck I've still got this room here that I can lift and move things around, okay? So do the same thing over here. Now you could also, if you don't have a knife, you could use the edge of your scissors. Either will work. I find um, I'm more comfortable using the edge of my knife and that's okay. And now I can do the same thing here. So let's go with just roughing that up and the bottom and now I'm going to pop a bit of tape in the middle hey look it might have even been nice if we did that with the doors if I'd lined them up properly but we didn't so moving on <laughs> Tape through the middle because I haven't decided if I'm going to tuck anything on the top yet. So if I tape in the middle, then I have got that flexibility to be able to move. All right, how far down from the top am I going to do it? Universal measurement of about four fat fingers, hey? How about that? And I'm making it straight by lining it up with that line there. And if I've measured it the same, theoretically, that'll work. And now I can tuck that under there. Happy days. Radio. So now I've got this bit here and I want to slide that in under here I might go from that side and then I'm going to have a join in my paper so it's going to be a case of working out which side the join is going to be on am I going to hide this join with a photo or the bottom of that or is the bottom of the one on this side bigger oh it is so therefore I'm going to go on that side and then the join will get covered up by some of the rocking horse maybe maybe baby all right let's whack some tape on there tape there we go But this is just a really lovely, simple recipe for a double, double scrapbook page that has got these really nice, pretty papers. Oh, I have an edge distressed. So on that open, that torn border, just kind of loosely roughing it up. Slide. What do you reckon? Stick. 
then this one here only really needs to be about that big so I'm not even going to paper trim it I swear people just love the way that I don't even care about using a paper trimmer or you know being less perfect and that's okay because this is my scrapbook layout not anybody else's so I'm going to layer that up there that's nice and flush and stick so what can happen next is a couple of things I can get in here and stick all of this down nice and flush but I don't really need to do it just yet okay let's go and have a look about where our have a look at these edges now and think what are we going to do with these how are we going to pop these on Oh, I like that. So I can push the edge of this piece here can sit under there. Got papers coming out of my ears here. That will go up there. That will sit in here. I think I think I want that one to sit that way. And I think I want that one to sit that way maybe. Admittedly, I have the advantage that I don't have any photos. So it doesn't matter which way the orientation goes at this stage, but it'll be fine. All right, I kind of like that. That's working really well for me. So this is just the base. Uh, I have papers left over so that you can make me a thank you card because you love that. And the next thing I want to do is I want to stick I want to stick these bits down before I do anything else. So then I know that they're anchored and I'm happy with them. Then I can pull this out and I can grab some frames and I can create some embellishments in and around my photos. So let's stick this down, but before we do, we need to rough up these edges, okay? So they're super straight and perfect at the moment. Let's distress them in a few spots. Safety alert, don't cut yourself with your craft knife. So if you are inking, you can ink the edges, a nice, Vintage photo style brown would be lovely. Um, so that's going to go there. And I'm okay with not putting it right up to the edge. Or I could. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to use some foam tape. And I'm going to keep my foam tape slightly to the middle and I will not go and I won't go all the way up here because I, I'm not too sure if I'm going to slide some more in underneath it. I want that flexibility to be able to do that. To go to edge or not to go to edge I say no I'm going to leave it about half a centimeter off of this side here all right I'm okay with that because it's my page but this this layout could easily take more than four foot double well, more than four photos or horizontal or vertical photos but once you edge something, like with an edge distressor, same as inking, you have to do the whole lot, okay? You, you have to commit to the whole lot. Same thing there. Hello, 
Tina. All right, and I'll do the same thing. I'll pop that there, leaving a little bit of a border. Looks good to me. That's still fine. I'm actually going to pop a bit of tape under here. Stick that down. Let's have a look at this corner up here. Edge first. So when you've got these super beautiful papers, it's really, really easy just to stop, have a look at the papers, see what the hero parts of the papers are, and then position them on your page to suit. My little rocking horse here. And this sort of style of layout would suit anything from uh, lovely portraits to uh, family event photos to perhaps even a wedding photo or a baby photo. Uh, plenty of options here for you to add different events and whatnot. But I have to say, it certainly made it a little bit easier by um, fussy cutting some of these elements out earlier. Okay, so still loose up here. And this one is going to also get the foam tape treatment. Just commit to it. Stick and commit. Now, this one's just gonna have one piece of foam tape. I'm just gonna be a little bit more gentle because I've got a loose area. Go to the top. do with this one is just lightly tuck underneath there I need to make sure that I have to stand up that that's about the same distance between here and here still loose still loose still has that um, ability to be able to tuck something up underneath it if I want to have a bit more tape under here now commit to it stick it down it's just paper Quick drink break. Splash it in my face. All right, I'm going to put some cardboard behind my images, uh, my pretend photographs, so that they are then lifted up as well and anchored into place. So I've said in my previous videos that I do use cardboard because uh, it just gives me more of a solid base for a photo and uh, it gives, and it's quite light. It's also a very inexpensive option uh, and a little sustainable. It's not touching the photograph. So even, you know, if you're worried about the acid free, then um, yeah, it's not going to be touching the photo because the photo is going to be matted, so it will be fine. So a little bit of a tip while I'm doing this about your photo printing. I know I've talked about this before, um, and this only goes for here in Adelaide. I cannot speak for anywhere else in the country, but I do know that here in South Australia, there is only, I think, Harvey Norman, that still do photo printing with the chemical drop. You know how they, you know, dip it through the um, the chemical bath to print the photos, like they used to do back in the olden days. Um, then places like Officeworks and Kmart and um, places like that still do, they do the dry photo printing. Um, and the difference other than the fact that you can 
they feel a little bit different is dry printing is not um, archival which means it will not last and if you are scrapbooking to preserve your family memories like most of us are then you need to make sure that they are going to still be printed still uh, you know you can still see them in 99 years time so if you're printing photos at home thinking that they're going to still be around in 99 years time I'm fairly certain that that's not going to be the case um, photo printing in order for it to be archival does need to go through that chemical process now that is the case last time I looked I do believe that the technology has not changed um, camera houses do them as well that's correct Tina so such if you have like a small uh, professional photo printing place you will find the same thing they will do a, a chemical drop but if you are home printing or just going to office works to get your photos printed uh, they're not going to give you the longevity that you are wanting okay okay so and you can tell a big difference between the photos that are printed professionally because they feel really nice um, versus the photos that are printed at say office works or Kmart or something like that um, it's extremely important information especially especially if you are preserving your memories for for your your for later on for your family down the track okay so ask if you are going in to pick up your printing from office works or Harvey Norman or Kmart or Big W or wherever you get your photos printed ask the question is this archival will this last 99 years okay ask that question I do know that Harvey Norman my local Harvey Norman still does chemical drop so but photo printing at home isn't going to last guys I'm sorry to burst your bubble on that and I'm sorry that you sprint, spent 300 bucks on a fancy printer um but it, that's just the way it is. Alrighty. And the reason I know this, where why does Natalie know this stuff? Uh, because Natalie has been working in this industry for 27 million years. And secondly, I, in my previous life, worked in, um, I managed a photography studio here in Adelaide. Uh, and... I do have a knowledge of this stuff. I have a superpower of knowing things like this. Okie dokie, enough waffle. We've stuck those photos down. So that's still a bit loose. Haven't worked out what I'm gonna do there yet. Um, this is loose. I can still tuck something in under here. This is still loose. This has still got some lift to it as well. Um, so now I just want to embellish. Now I wanna take my trimmer off my desk and I want to pull out I want to have a look at some of these images here and some of these frames I do love the frames the frames can sit really nicely around your photos uh, so let's see are there any any images on here that I want I want all the images I do like the stack of books so I'm going to cut that out now so that I don't accidentally use that I'll probably change my mind but that's okay and I don't mind this guy here so I'm going to cut that out now so that I don't accidentally cut him out uh, and then I would like to cut out some frames so I do like I like this 
blue frame here. So the other side of it is the swing and then it's the, the blue ornate frame. And what I'm going to do is cut, cut, throw the rubbish off to the side, clean that up later. How am I going for time? 40 minutes. Loving myself. Okay, then that's going to go in here, but I'm going to, I want to tuck it and I want it to be a frame. So I don't need to cut a hole in the middle of it. I can just cut a slit. Because I'm not going to see it all. Now I'm going to rough the edges up and not lose a finger. Time to crack out the glue. And that is gonna go in there and in there. But I've got too much there and too much there so I can tear that off. Unblock my glue with my good old fashioned nappy pin. Hello, Sue. I'm just noticing some comments while I'm unblocking this. Loving this project. Thank you for the information about printing photos. I'll be checking out now to see if they are archival. Um, yes. Hey, look, and don't take my word as gospel. Things may have changed with technology. Um, you know how technology changes every second week. And I understand that. But last, oh, come on, glue. Last time I checked, that was the case, okay? So for those of you just tuning in, this particular project that I'm creating at the moment, as soon as I'm finished teaching it, I will be putting it up online as a kit for you to purchase. Okay, that can go down a bit lower actually. Uh, it'll be a kit for you to purchase on nataliemay.com.au and the price of that kit is around the, I think around the $22 mark. Okay. And you're going to have a heap of stuff left over as well because we have only used a, a percentage of the papers. All right. But you will get all of the papers that we've that I've shown here and the cardstock. The only thing that you're going to need to add is your double sided tape and adhesive and use your own scissors and trimmer, of course. And I want this one to go here. So the other side of that, sorry, I should have told you that, was the rocking horse, okay? I don't want to use the rocking horse. And um, there's no written instructions on the with the kit. You are watching the written instructions at the moment. So instead of me writing them all out, which is my least favorite thing in the whole wide world to do, by the way, I'm only human. Tuck and slide. There's probably a bit too much showing there. Let's get rid of that. Drop that down. So now my photos have these lovely little frames around them as well. Yeah, decorations, decorations, decorations. Here are some of the fussy cuts that I had before. I've got some big flowers. I have some bird cages. I have a number plate, some more flowers. A flower pot and let's start with layering these out I do like this lamp I'm quickly just going to cut this guy out um, because I quite like the way that this can come out from underneath the photo with the arm there okay so that's my thinking behind that I might cut it out and it look a bit crap but that's okay if that's the case I've wasted about I don't know, someone timed me. How long does it take to cut this out? Not very long, I suspect.
So just while I, uh, you're watching me cut out paper, um, don't forget that for today only, you can jump online to grab paper collections at 15% off. So we have got brands such as Minte, we have 49 and Market, Simple Stories, Photo Play, Echo Park, Carter Bella, Graphic 45, Stamperia, uh, AB Studios, 13 Arts, um, Paper Rose, Uniquely Creative. We have Craft Box out of the UK, which I do believe that I am the only one in Australia that is selling that. Um, and I've done a great card kit using that collection. Um, there's, there's so many amazing papers and paper collections. We also have collage paper available as well to purchase. So make sure that you jump online and have a bit of a look. Have a look through the papers section, look at some of the brands, take a moment and uh, buy some more bits and pieces for your stash. Support us little local small businesses. All right, a bit of foam tape under there. So this is live Facebook number 15 for me <laughs> for the last couple of days. It's, it's been quite a, quite a couple of days and, oh, I forgot to edge it, but I've stuck it down now, so let's commit to it. Um, so yes, I have been working my pants off and creating us up a storm here. Created some great projects, some really lovely cards that you all apparently love to death, which is wonderful. Uh, let's have a look here. Let's stick some foam tape on the back of some bits and pieces just so that I can get in there and commit to it, hey? I do love the suitcase. There's books here, books here, suitcase here, but there's not nothing on this side. So I think that I am going to pop that in there. I'm going to cut that out and pop it in there because it's about, I've got that depth there and I need the depth up there. Uh, I love this pot plant, so I think it needs to kind of sit in here. That's a great spot for it. You know what? Just stick it down. And it tucks in around those images. Uh, I also have a ticket. I have a ticket to ride. Ticket, 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 ticket. Don't need a ticket. But I am going to cut this out. I am almost done, Alison. 15 done and one to go. Yeah, this afternoon I'm gonna do one more live Facebook and that will be the last one for the weekend. I uh, haven't quite established what I'm going to do yet. I might make some tags that can go into an art journal or I might do a little painty art journal page. I'm having an idea. I'm having an idea, story of my life. Uh, having an idea, I might do a little cutout sort of page. Oh, look at that. You can't even tell that I just cut those leaves off completely. Um, yeah, so I might do something this afternoon. One more project, a little bit of paint, a little bit, perhaps something's inspired by the incredibly talented Tracy Scott. I don't know. That's annoying, okay. That's wonderful, it's a lovely little leaf sticking out the side there, but nobody would notice if I cut it off. Look at that, okay. So that's off the three by four card sheet and that is gonna sit in there. Because fussy cutting things is not my superpower, And that's okay. I have other amazing talents. Cooking and cleaning and wifing and parenting is not in the top 10, by the way, if anybody's asking. Oh, perfect. 
Loving it. Bird cage. We've already got a bird cage. So I could pop that one on top of there to give it some dimension. I could pop it on the top of there to give it some dimension. Or I could exclude it completely because it doesn't need another bird cage. Let's cluster. So it's flowers, flowers. Bit of a tip this flower is pointing that way so I feel the need for it to go on a page where it's facing that way so it would probably be best up here or it would be great down here but of course I can't put it there because that's where the middle of my page goes so I'm going to put it in there So I'm not just shoving things in there willy-nilly. Um, there is some method to it. And that is it's the way that the orientation of the flowers sit. Okay. Um, so that is there. And I'll bring it up to camera and so you can all see it in a moment. Uh, now, this one, I, I feel the need for a little bit more going on here or perhaps in under here. So rather than, I'm just gonna cut that in half. I'm just gonna commit to it. And I've totally cut it the wrong way, but that's okay. Let's go like that. Dun, dun, dun. And Half a flower there. It's this stem here that makes it look like it's going a certain way. So the way that we solve that problem is we cut it off. pop it in the side there and then and then we need to cover up we need to cover up this exposed edge here and we do that by adding flowers because flowers like butterflies solve all the world's problems Almost. Mm -hmm. Done. Knowing when to stop is important as well. And I could stop about now. And that works for me. I went to the trouble of cutting these out, so I'm going to stick them on. Nearly there. And I'm going to finish this page off oops, by adding some glossy dimension to it some dimensional magic. Now, anyone who's done any of my projects and kits before will know that is my go-to thing to use to lift up dimension on a page. Before I do that, let's bring it up to camera and I will show you how we are looking so far. Oh, a couple of you have still hung around. Thank you for committing to it. So you can see that frame up in the corner. There's our little cluster of flowers stuck down there. There's that lovely corner piece going around to that tuck in under the rocking horse of that extra flower. We've got a 
few more there. I still do have a title to put on that's included in the kit. So coming up here, there's that lovely little cluster that I just slid in here. You can see that and those books. And then around the lantern on the side here, we have also got those, um, those slide in elements. Okay. Um, I did nearly forget. Lou, do you just want to um, inventory adjust Uniquely Creative 1840? So I've got these lovely little stickers here and I'm going to use those as my title. And peel that off. And I peel it off a little at a time and then I will show you the trick for putting it on your project because they can get a little curly. Which is what is happening now because they're super sticky. And then I ripped it. So let's let's see what we do. We grab a ruler. If I haven't completely messed this up, being super keen. And I stick a little on the edge of my ruler. And then I create the word again, if I haven't messed it up. I think I did, I think I was a bit over keen on, oh no, here we go. I was a bit over keen on pulling it off the packaging. My M's a bit loopy. Sorry, I just need to kind of do that off camera a little because I need to get my head over it a bit. So having a little patience apparently pays off. I would know. So see how that's now sitting on the ruler. I can add it to my page. I can work out where I want to put it. I think I'm going to put it across here because it's got a pop of glitter. Oh, maybe over here. Oh, there's a nicer spot. Oh, uh, and let's see, will the IES fit there? Of course it will. Sorry about that, guys. And peel that off without messing it up. Now, has anybody got any fancy tricks for doing this? Or is this the fancy trick? Because I would love to know if there are any other amazing ways of taking them off. The sheet and don't forget to dot your eye. All right, saved it. Um, 20. Um, so I've got memories there and I might pop another word and I'll do it off camera um, down there. So I was talking about the glossy accents, the dimensional magic, the product that's gonna give it a shine and a sparkle. This is my go-to. This is called Dimensional Magic, and I've shown it before. But what I like to do with this is create a... I'll just show you up close on camera. So then I can just whip through and do it. So this is just a scrap. What I like to do is just draw with it. So I can... 
use the nozzle I'm, I'm barely squeezing it and I'm creating that little bit of shimmer so if I go over here for example I know it's not showing very well on camera but it has now got a gloss to it okay and that's what I use to give the page an extra bit of oomph so I will go over like my flowers for example and just do some loopy bits to enhance the the petals it is super loose but so are petals on a flower they don't have to be perfect okay it's just quite the loop so it takes about 10 minutes to dry it's always going to be the last thing that you do on a page um, you'll find that yeah it, it doesn't take long but it creates a little shine to your project so you can make leaves, do them with the leaves um, you'll find this product on the website under the tools category and there's a few similar products there's a little uh, a little one in there if you want to try a sample and I think it's called the it's like a glaze I can't remember the name of it but it's the Couture Creations one um, there is this one here which is the it's made by Mod Podge um, but it is a, a dimensional magic okay so you can see I'm just being super loose and in it highlights some of these bits so the books are now shiny they're going to dry shiny and this is what I use on cards layouts mini albums when you're using paper for embellishments and you want them to stand out on your page this is my secret little go-to that's no longer secret But it's just going to give these things a lovely shine and the cool thing about it is as well is you don't have to be perfect with it there's no perfection with it as um, either so I can just do the outline here Knowing when to stop can be important. Sometimes I have been known to overdo it quite significantly, but you need to do it pretty much, you know, you need to commit to, to putting it on there. All right, so this layout is, um, is going to be available online in the next half an hour or so. What I will do is as soon as I get offline, I will just take a quick photograph and pop it on the website you will find it under new for February because like it's February in a day or so you'll also find it in the show specials category and it is a 20 or 22 dollar kit I think it's 22 dollars and it is going to go up online so what you are watching at the moment is the instructions for it because there's no printed instructions there will be a printout of the finished project for you to um, refer to and a link to the for the YouTube so um, keeping it nice and simple on this lovely Sunday afternoon but it's certainly a, a project that you could put anywhere I, I could get another photo here I could get another photo in here or another small one in here there's plenty of room in here for lots of photographs and fussy cutting can be fun and really really effective and relaxing sometimes so there you go so jump online to nataliemay.com.au the uh, online show will finish at the end of today and today like I said earlier being the 29th 30th of January um, 2022 you can get 15% off of paper and collage paper on nataliemay.com.au okay so there you go radio i'm just reading some comments there's some funny words going on in there all right so i'll bring that up so i don't know if you can see any of that shine but it is all there for you
Okay, ladies, that is me done for the afternoon. I will be back here at 4 p.m. and I'm going to create a bright, punchy art journal page. That's the go. All right, have a great afternoon. Wash your hands, kiss your kids, and we'll chat to you really soon.